Which frames do you think look better on me? Do you like these ones? Mm -hmm. Or do you like these ones? Well, I kind of like the classic black frame. You think? Mm -hmm. I kind of really like these red sport frame ones. Well, those look cool too. Which ones are you going to get? Oh gosh, I have no idea which loops I'm going to pick. This is a dilemma you will soon face when it's time for you to choose your first pair of dental loops. There are many choices and it can be very confusing, but one thing we can tell you is that there are many more aspects to consider than just how your new loops look on you. Hi there new dental students, we're here to welcome you to the world of dental loops. You know those funny looking glasses dentists wear? Loops can be very helpful with better visualization and improvement of posture with the correct working distance and magnification. But we'll get into those things in a bit. We have some information that will help you to choose your perfect pair of loops. Let's check in with our dentist and see how he's doing today. Uh, sorry, I just need to stretch my neck really quick. Sure, no problem, Doc. Okay, thanks, I'll be right back. First thing to know is how important it is to be aware of your head tilt and natural neck position. We don't want your chin to be too far into your chest or your neck extended too far backwards. We want you in a nice comfortable position with a head tilt angle less than 20 degrees without any eye strain. The declination angle can be measured by the line of sight made with your neutral eye position and the line of sight made by your chosen declined eye position. Viewing angle is a combination of head tilt angle and declination angle. Dental working distance. Step one, sit in an adjustable chair as if you were working on a patient. It's important to sit in an ideal posture as this is the posture you will be using when wearing the loops. Feet flat on the floor, thighs parallel to the floor, straight back, arms at a 90 degree angle, elbows close to the body. Step two, maintaining your position in step one, hold a tape measure in one hand and draw it towards your eyes with the other hand. Measure the distance between your eyes and the base of the tape measure as shown. All right, thanks for waiting. Sure, Doc, I never realized how tall you were. How tall are you? Uh, yeah, I guess I am a little tall, I'm six foot. Hmm. This brings us to another important aspect to consider when choosing loops, working distance. Working distance is the distance between our eyes and our work site. This is based on our working range and height. To figure out our working range, we need to measure the nearest and farthest distances within which the object remains in sharp focus. Of course, in our case, the object is a tooth. The middle point of these two measurements is our working length. Here you can see the dentist's nearest working range distance is 16 inches and her farthest is 24 inches. Since the middle point is 20 inches, this would be her working length. Great! Now that we have those aspects all worked out, let's check back in with our dentist. Doc, I couldn't help but notice that your dental glasses look like the microscopes we use in biology lab. How do they work exactly? Yeah, that's right. In the dental world, they're called loops. They help me to better see the details of your teeth. Depending on what brand, I can choose different magnifications, which would determine the telescope size. The higher the magnification, the larger the telescope size, the larger your teeth appear. Hmm. Most dental procedures can be performed with 2.5 times to 5 times magnification power. Let's take a closer look at what these magnifications might look like behind the loops. With the 2.5 times magnification loops, you can see the telescope size is minimal. You will have a large field of view, so not only can you see the tooth you're preparing, but you will simultaneously see one or two adjacent teeth and tooth structures such as the surrounding gingiva at a single glance. Loops offer much more detail than the naked eye alone. However, this low magnification offers the least amount of detail. This is a 3.5 times magnification. As you can tell, the telescope size has increased. As we go up in magnification, your field of view will become smaller. And although you will see less of the surrounding structures, such as fewer teeth, etc., at a single glance, the detail of the tooth you're working on will be greater. 
please note that there is an option called Expanded Field of View where you can get the best of both worlds for a slightly higher cost. Here we have a powerful 5x magnification. Again, with an increased telescope size and magnification, you will be able to see fine details. Remember, more detail equals a smaller field of view. This higher magnification can be suitable for endodontic procedures. Many dentists who haven't had any experience with loops might want to start with a lower power magnification. But as I mentioned earlier, height has a lot to do with your loop choice. Shorter dentists with a working length of less than 16 inches would better utilize a 2 times magnification with optimal visual resolution. As your working distance increases, the magnification power of the telescope decreases. For taller dentists with a working length of more than 16 inches, they would benefit from starting off with a 3 times magnification to compensate for their long arms and torso. The 2 times magnification would give taller dentists a lesser quality visual resolution. As a general guide to choosing your magnification, you can refer to this chart. For a working length of 15 inches, it's best to start with the 2.5 times magnification. For a working length of 18 inches, it's best to start with 3 times magnification. For a working length of 21 inches, it's best to start with 3.5 times magnification. These are not set rules, but just some recommendations to start you off on the right foot. All right, we just got one more thing to finish up here. I'm just going to turn on my light so I can see a little bit better. Sure. Whoa, that's way too bright. Let me just turn it down here so I can see. There we go. There are many different lights to select from when it comes to loops. You may think the brighter the light, the better I can see, but this is actually not the case. Having excessive light will cause a reduction in your pupil size and decrease your eye's resolution capabilities. It will also wash out all the details of the surfaces you're trying to see. To help determine what light brightness works best for you, we aim to maintain the optimum target to background ratio, which is 3 to 1. This means that your work site should be at least 3 times brighter than the background. Another factor to consider when choosing your light is color temperature. Being that most loop lights are LED now, we still have to be aware of what color temperature is most beneficial, has the least amount of blue light and is least harmful to our eyes. This can be determined by what type of LED light you choose. LED lights come in white, neutral, and cool. It's found that neutral LED light, which work at the color temperature of 4000 Kelvin, has the best spectral distribution and is least harmful to the eye. This means neutral LED lights work at wavelength of the same range as our eyes when exhibiting visual efficiency. The higher the color temperature, the higher the relative risk factor of blue light hazard. Color temperatures vary across the LED lights available on the market for dental loops. This might be something you would like to ask your loop representative about before making your selection. Now that we've talked about head tilt, declination angle, working distance magnification, and lights, it seems you have all the tools and are ready to choose your first pair of loops. Let's check back in with our dentist one last time. All right, you did great today. Everything looks to be in order and you're good to go. Thanks, Doc. I'll see you next time. And by the way, I really like the style of your loop frames. Thank you. I'll see you next time. And now introducing the new technology that has recently emerged in the world of dental loops, the prismatic deflection loops. In a simplified way, they work like dental microscopes, where you look straight without the need to bend your neck or strain your eyes, which enables you to maintain a neutral position at all times. This could potentially decrease and or prevent long-term eye fatigue and body strain that leads to chronic pain. We hope all this information will help you to choose your perfect pair of loops. Good luck!